Stone Thailand Major. My name is CJ. I'm joined on the desk for the next match by D2. And man, it is grand finals time. And it's a true grand finals. Player come from the lower bracket, which is Lita. Hometown hero, it appears, judging by how the crowd's reaction to some of his wins uh, has been insane. And it's going to be insane because he has to win two matches in a row. Yeah, definitely. He has his workout cut out for him, but certainly the way he's been rolling lately, I kind of like his chances. He's already qualified for the APAC Championships and has been rolling through this bracket. Only had one loss, and that was to Chonger a bit mm. earlier, but already avenged that loss. So let's see if he can just get two wins in the finals. Yeah, Shai has uh, proven to be a tough opponent for everybody that he's faced so far as he uh, has made it all the way through the winner's bracket. Um, his decks have been pretty standard uh, across the board, except he hasn't brought Warrior, which is a really interesting choice. Um, and same with Lita. So uh, no no Warriors in the Grand Finals, which is probably a surprise to a lot of people. Yeah, certainly. Taking a look at our schedule, this is kind of a recap of what we've done today, essentially. Starting with the round of eight upper bracket all the way to this point, and now it is the Grand Finals. No need to keep track anymore. We are in the biggest match of the day. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Leda can find that win. And um, I, about, I think I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, but it's uh, going to be a good one. <laughs> yeah, it should be good. should be great. Um, Leda has... Oh, I was going to talk about Twitter. Let oh. us know who you want to win. Yeah, OK. Give us your predictions. Uh, tweet hashtag is Hearth SEA Major. So uh, let us know who you guys want to win. Uh, Shy, of course, a player from Hong Kong, I yep. believe. And then a hometown. Thailand, actually from Bangkok as well, so I hmm. uh, didn't have to travel. And uh, then you, there you can see sort of their paths to get to this point. I know the names are tiny, but we start off with 128 players. It just goes to show how much they've had to go through in order to get to this point. So many players that they've had to defeat. And going to be shy versus Leta in that finals here. Can't even, it's hard to look at some of the players in there. Yeah. But uh, there's some really good players like Tom, for instance, a multiple land winner. We had Ping Bing Ho. He went to BlizzCon as well as a couple of championships in a row. We had Nilio, who went to BlizzCon last year. A lot of great players in this field. And Kranich as well, double BlizzCon uh, qualifier. So, yeah, there's uh, been lots of uh, big names. Also, uh, so far in Southeast Asia majors, well, there's been one, the Singapore major. It's mm -hmm. been won by a a uh, player that's local to the region. Of yep. course, it's statistically likely because usually about half the field or a little bit more than half the field is from the home country. But well, uh, Based on the numbers. <laughs> yeah, based on the numbers, yeah. But uh, Sign Face won the Singapore Major. Right. And now Aleta is in a position to win this one. Uh, he's not a favorite by any means because of the way the grand final bracket structure works and having to win two best of fives in a row. But you just have to think of it as that, just two best of fives. It's not a singular match. Just win the first one, then win the second one. It sounds easy to do. Hard in practice, but if you can win one match, you could probably win two matches, you know, based off those results. And the way their decks line up, they have very similar lineups. You know, they both have Rogue. They both have Token Druid, even though there's a little bit of differences between the two. Uh, the difference is going to be in their sort of off-meta choice. Uh, which is Warlock for Letta and Hunter for Shy. Yeah, but definitely. The way those matchups work mm. out, the Warlock should come out on top yeah. sometime. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I do actually have some experience coming from the lower bracket and winning two best of fives to win championship. Yep. Uh, in the I Battle remember. of the Best way back in uh, 2014 before BlizzCon, yeah. uh, I came from the lower bracket, beat Forsen, and then I beat Forsen again. Felt good. Yeah, I, but re <laughs> I remember that tournament. <laughs> But uh, the, the one thing to keep in mind is that if you do win that first best of five, the pressure is on the guy who came from the upper bracket. Oh, yeah. Because all of a sudden you're like, oh, geez, I don't want to lose this. I had such good odds coming in, and now it's an even series, and my opponent has all the momentum. So Yeah. Um, let us, one thing about him, uh, as we take a look at a couple of the crowd shots here, they would go crazy. I don't know. As soon as a Yogg is even drawn... <laughs> Like, you could feel the tension in the air. They all start to just go nuts. Yeah, this is the city of Yogg, Bangkok, Thailand. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And, uh, yeah, you, Lettuce bans have been really weird so far throughout the tournament. It feels like he just bans weird stuff that he doesn't want to play against. Well, he, if he, you don't want to lose to certain decks, and it certainly makes sense. Like, last round, he banned the Shaman. He had the Rogue, didn't want that to die. So, But <laughs> earlier in the tournament, one of the other matchups that he watched in a very similar situation where his opponent had Shaman and Warrior, he banned Warrior. 
<laughs> so well, I, I feel well, like he just looks at the list and, and is like, I don't like that card. <laughs> or I don't like that list. Uh, yeah, right, Chonger right. did have a control warrior. Yeah. Uh, so maybe he felt like he was going to be better against control. But that's interesting because, like, his I, – I guess Rogue is better against control than it would be against Dragon. Right. He did just – Destroy the control warrior last race. He defeated it three times. Yeah, but those tick masters, man, <laughs> they were working for the wrong side. That is certainly true. But I think, you know, it might be just comfort. Like, he wants to make decisions. Yeah. He wants to be able to have an input on the game. Sometimes your opponent can have this crazy curve right off the bat, and you're just stuck. You know, I can't do anything about this, especially when it's a really fast aggro deck, whether it be, you know, aggro shaman or something like a Dragon Warrior. We've seen players just lose without any input in the game from their side. Mm -hmm. So maybe he just wants a little bit longer games. We saw when he played his Druid against the Control Warrior, made immaculate decisions, and made sure that it was impossible for Chonger to deal with. Yeah, and uh, it was a tough match. Did he lose that game? No, he won. He beat the, the Control Warrior three times. Oh. So he what, ha what happened was, we were talking about how he needed to make three big boards. And he made a board, or you know, uh, beyond the two brawls. But he made one board that was just really impossible to deal with. Oh yeah, the yeah, second yeah, yeah. He won. And then from there, he ended up just having exact lethal with the savage roar and the power of the wild and the trail rage. I was thinking of uh, the perhaps the game before that, mm -hmm. where there was a con the match before that where there was a control warrior who beat a druid because he just sort of out resourced him in the later, later stages of the game. Yeah. Whoever played the removal warrior. Yeah, I, I think... It was like a I, revenge. I kept, I kept calling the Nazoth warrior, like, favored in this matchup, favored in that yeah. matchup. I think I'm just used to Cthune, just getting massive amounts of armor, but when you only have Justicar and a couple of... Or I think that's maybe one shield block in the deck, you're uh, a lot less armor <laughs> than when you just get those ancient shield bears up there. It's very minion heavy, especially right. when you run... Especially when you run Barnes. Mm -hmm. Uh, your deck becomes very minion heavy. There was one point in the game where he had like Sylvanas, Justicar, Cairn, Barnes, and Tinkmaster. That was his hand. Right. Like yeah, against, against Rogue. Rogue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And none of those are great because all the big threats that you just play just have a risk of being sapped, especially since Leta was sitting with like a hand of like eight cards or something yep. along those lines. But uh, since Leta did just play a match, uh, he was given just a small little break. So uh, the Not the catchers, though. Not the catchers, no. <laughs> Uh, he was given a little break, so uh, the ban should be coming in momentarily, which means we should be jumping into the first game of the Grand Finals within just a few minutes here. Yeah, strange bans aside, uh, we were just you were mentioning the decks just a moment ago. Uh, Druid, Shaman, Hunter, and Rogue for Shy, and the Druid, Shaman, Warlock, and Rogue there for Letta. So if it were you, uh, let's say you're Letta. You have Druid, Rogue, Shaman, Warlock. You're facing off against Druid, Shaman, Hunter Rogue, your opponent's show, Shaman is a mid-range. He's playing Token Druid and somewhat standard Hunter as well as, you know, Questing Adventure Rogue. What is your ban? Well, since he's been rotating between Shaman and Warrior bans the whole tournament, Shaman, almost 100%, mm. uh, just because uh, he can probably match up well against the Druid, which he's been crushing all day, and Hunters, which he's been crushing all day. Right. We haven't really seen Rogue Mirrors from him. Uh, and the Questing Adventure Rogue, I think, is better against the standard Miracle than right. like a like than a mirror match would be, or vice versa. Um, so that matchup is going to be a little bit of a mismatch. But I feel like his Zoo is going to be really good against the Questing Rogue because Questing Rogue is worse against right your Zoo you have than to set up regular uh, yeah. old Miracle Rogue was. So. Um, it's it's tough to say, but on paper, I feel like Lettuce got the edge. Yeah, definitely. Just that little difference in the Rogue, mm -hmm. being able to deal with Zoo a bit better. Uh, questing Adventure isn't really something that you can make happen until, you know, pretty late. Unless you get, you know, turn three, you have Questing Adventure backstab uh, with the uh, prep into yeah. some more stuff. But like I said, we do have the bands in, and you were correct. Double Shaman. Double Shaman. Double Shaman band. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't Shaman. At least it wasn't Shaman. Yep. Yeah, that, that disease is caught along some of the casters. <laughs> some of those casters, which I have talking, to cast Talking with. to you, Raven. <laughs> some of those casters, which I have to cast with a lot. Uh, but yeah, no surprise with the Shaman bands. Uh, there was, like, maybe a chance for Shy to ban away the Warlock. I was thinking he might want to ban away Zoo because Zoo's strong against his Rogue as well as his... Right. Uh, uh, Hunter, 
if he expected his own Shaman to be banned. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a case, but Mid Shaman is just so strong right now, and it's becoming even more popular. Uh, with Spear Claws, people are, players are learning how to play with Spear Claws more. It's another early game tool that Shamans have at their disposal to, to make it through. And if your early game's better, that means your mid game's better. And that means, you know, mid range Shaman gets a little bit of a boost mm -hmm. because you don't have to worry about getting damage in early. You can really just worry about the board early and then use like Thunderbolt Valiant and, you know, Azure Drakes and Maelstrom Portals to pretty much keep control of the board through the rest of the game. And there's a visual visualization of the deck list as well as the bands for you guys. I know we sort of went over them, but uh, I know I love the visual cues as well. So you guys can take a look there as we get ready to jump into game one in a few moments. Yep, I'm a visual person as well. Love seeing those icons on to the screen right there. Seen it for so long now. By the way, that is what they are playing for. If we take a look at Shy Blurry in the background because the key is in the foreground. They are both looking for that key. Focus. Uh, there we Boom. Go. We got it. Just uh, looks just like take, taking their time. Looks pretty shy to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, key number two. Except it's the same key. Yeah. Plot twist. And let a. No, no, that's why historians in this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no plot twist. Anyway, let a. He is smiling. I think the tie casters are going pretty nuts talking about him. Yeah. By the way. Tide Cast is very hype, similar to Kareem Cast. They are so eccentric. It is unbelievable to watch them. I have no idea what they're saying, and <laughs> I'm still entertained whenever I go down and, and watch them live or just take a look at the uh, the Thai stream. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Lots of energy here. Uh, Southeast Asia in general, uh, crowds just go nuts. I uh, cast in front of a live crowd in the Philippines for the Southeast Asian Championship of 2015. And man, like anything, even like a draw on turn one. If it's like a cool <laughs> draw, like a, a rogue will draw backstab on turn one. What? And the crowd will just go nuts. New like, card punch ah, Backstab! <laughs> uh, well, if, something, if something crazy happens, like someone like spots a crazy lethal or someone like top decks a Force of Nature or Savage Roar back then when right. uh, those were actually good. Uh, those were actually would, cards. <laughs> yeah, it would be it's so crazy. It's so different here. Uh, it was no different in Singapore for the Singapore mm. Major as well. Just a very passionate group of individuals in Southeast Asia. All right, looks like we're getting into the first game. And uh, yeah, just earlier when you were casting, for instance, when Gogong picked up the flame track off the top, you were probably like, oh, that's not going to help him too much. Yeah, but the entire cast was going like, nuts. oh my god. <laughs> oh, god. Like he was dead 100%. <laughs> like flame track barely even took much power off the board. Right, flame track into Yogg, though. Yeah. He kept him alive. He kept him yeah, so he didn't could've. die that exact turn. But, it uh, could have. Anything <laughs> to keep the hope of Yogg alive is what they live for. <laughs> the city of Yogg, Bangkok, Thailand. Here at the Pantip Sports Arena. All right. Speaking of backstab, that is in the hand of Shy. I imagine he's going to wait until turn three to go ahead and use it. He can actually go for something kind of weird and wacky like turn three, questing adventure, backstab, coin. Cold blood to turn into what would that be at that point? A 9 5? So, you never know. By the way, this is the only Malkazar's Imp in the deck here of Leta. It is not really discard lock, it just kind of zoo with one Malkazar's Imp in it. Pretty, pretty standard, too. You know, it's got a Sea Giant, runs one Soul Fire, one Malkazar's Imp, so uh, just having an extra one drop. Uh, can be pretty important in the matchup, in a lot of matchups. Especially a threatening, you know, one drop like Malkazor's Imp can really feel your hand. Yep, feel your hand to 1 3. I really like the versions of the theme or the discard zoo that have Demon Fire. <laughs> uh, I don't think a lot of times Darkshire Librarian is cut for that, or you can even cut, you know, some of the more consistent cards to make room for it, but I don't recommend that. Ooh. Okay, well, Van Cleef has picked up. I think prep was what Shai wanted to see here. Could have gone for questing. Backstep, uh, prep, sap, coin, cold blood, something like that. But as it stands, in a bit of trouble here. Uh, could go for coin. He could go for something weird like coin, uh, backstab, cold blood, kill the cold blooded minion, play Van Cleef. If you want to take five damage and make an 8 8. Yeah, I don't know if that's really worth it, though. All right, well, I think just, just yeah, yeah. yeah, sap, because with sap, you can 
effectively force him to play it again, and then next turn, sap coin Edwin. Or just coin at Azure Drake plus backstab. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully you pick up prep yeah. and you maybe sap it again. So. But, I mean, if he just replays uh, Darkshire Councilman this turn, you can almost clear the board and develop an AD. Because now he has sap coin, backstab the boardwalker, attack in, and Edwin. By the way, for those of you who are curious why TJ said earlier that the Questing Adventure Rogue is a bit worse against Zoo, you're seeing exactly why. Questing yep. Adventures aren't really doing anything right now. Yeah, if that was a Violet Teacher or an Earthling Farseer coming up to the board to contest, and you really don't need to, like, win against this deck. You just have to not lose until you can draw into enough damage. And usually making a big questing adventure is a lot less consistent against this deck because of Defender Vargas, because of Voidwalkers, because they'll just sort of burst you down before you get to that point. So, Also, you have, you, a lot of times you have less removal. Um, I think you have more room to run Double Shadow Strike in, in old, old Miracle, whereas in the new Miracle with questing adventure, a lot of players don't run Double Shadow Strike, which I think is a mistake, D2. <laughs> Get rid of that SI. Run one SI and double shadow strike. It's better. <laughs> yeah, we were having that, that discussion earlier. But uh, yeah, uh, that, all that aside, Shy, he actually had a really well thought out plan starting from a couple turns ago. Got the 8 8 Bank Fleet out here. Instead of Leda, this is the power of Malkazar's MP. Play with that Doom Guard. Doesn't matter. You got two more cards anyway. Don't like these cards anyway. Who, who needs who needs a, a Dark Shark Council and just gets sapped? Yeah. All right, well. Pressure is back on the shy, down to 17 health, and with only mm. one Earthen Ring, excuse me, he has no Earthen Ring Fosters, because this isn't Leda's Rogue. Uh, with very, with little healing, zero healing in the deck, he's under the gun. Huh. I don't you really like the Eviscerate here. I'm only killing on Malkazers yet, but I would have liked to see Azure Drake get closer to a prep to try and make a big turn next turn where you questing adventure prep something and then eviscerate something. You only take one extra power off the board but and you use eviscerate and you d have a 3-3 three, three instead of a 4-4. Four, four. I think he wants to just clear the board because this effectively clears the board because even if use of charging going into the questing adventure kills off the shadow beast. So he just kind of wants to put an extra threat in the board and you know if you're Leda do I kill an 8-3 or do I kill a 3-3 three, three that grows every single turn. So putting a lot of pressure on to Leda. You don't really need to kill an Azure Drake, essentially. Yeah. But uh, Leda says, you know what? I don't really need this. See, Giants. Just gonna go ahead and soul fire. The issue with Shai's plan, though, is that now Leda can just ignore the A3. <laughs> and now the now the Edwin's doing cleanup duty. Yeah. I mean, he's still at 30. Leda can, is basically gonna say, well, your Edwin's probably gonna trade into my minions anyway. And he would have drawn a prep. Wow. Yeah. Would have been pretty nice. But Shy, all of a sudden, needs to make a decision. I think he has to go face with this Edwin. I think he eventually he needs to find a way to just kill at some point. But disagrees. Starts cleaning out the board. And Letta is perfectly playing 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 this game. First tap of the game. That trigger is pretty good. It's very threatening if it sticks onto the board, which is a big deal. Well, Smork Juggler says, I don't really care about this Cleave. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't care about the Cleave either, Juggler. Well, going to go ahead and trade in with his Possessed Villager, it looks like. And is he going to trade into the Drake? Nope. Well, he's going to go face again. And Shy really wants to pick up a Phantom Eyes right now. That is not it. Fan off Still pick top, it up, though. Now there's three spell power. Aww. Well, unfortunately, the prep doesn't work like Innervate. You can't prep SI here. <laughs> Everything is just so awkward here for Shy. Like, all of these cards in hand don't really work well with each other, other than Leroy power, or Leroy Cold Blood killing the phase. But. Yeah, just gonna cycle the Blood Mage. Needs those cards right now. We have six damage on the board. Something like a power bombing would be lethal. Abusive plus knife to the face. That there is it is. Lethal. And Leda is gonna go ahead and take a 1 0 series lead. And we already have the Tie Fens going nuts. Yeah. That is a rough game for Shy because 
his opening hand was pretty bad. And he probably felt like he played that early game pretty well, but just wasn't able to get it out. Leather's got too much damage in early. And so he's going to take a 1-0 lead. He's got a long road ahead of him if he wants to take the grand finals. But uh, first step, he's step done. one of six. Step one of six. That's right. Well, that all said, though, we did kind of predict that that Warlock was going to be able to do pretty well yeah. against the Rogues. So Shia taking a bit of a gamble going off with a deck that he knew was weak to in that uh, zoo in particular. And just thins the break sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now Shy has to sort of... Uh, rethink his game plan here in his head. I know he was hoping to get a win, uh, like a quick win with that Questy Rogue, so he wouldn't have to go into the mirror matchup, even though I think he'd be good in the mirror matchup. Rogue mirror matchups are stressful. <laughs> they're the most stressful mirror match because you always think that they're going to have the nuts, even when you have it. So uh, the Rogue probably wanted to dodge that, but... I think when you go into any sort of matchup against the Rogue, because if you do take a look at the crowd here, very enthusiastic fans. He has some players going nuts there. I see a lot of players, actually, that I've recognized over the weekend, including, actually, I, I met Throne just a few moments ago. Yeah. Pretty cool guy. I was down there. Speaks very fluent English. Yeah. I was down there talking to a bunch of them yesterday um, as they were going through their matches, trying to actually get actually. it from word of mouth instead of looking at the bracket, because right. it's much easier to... You, you look in, on the bracket and you see a 3-2, but there's much more to it than that a lot of times. So you see their faces, they're like, yeah, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> they need to smoke. Helping out their friends, like saying, oh, this guy ran this, this guy ran this. Even though Deckless Republic, you know, just so, sort of hearing like the words from how it feels, yeah. how it feels, uh, like how he plays and things like that. There's a lot of teammates here. Yeah. Uh, like there's Singapore has Game Forge, they have Mana Surge, mm -hmm. uh, Abyssus. Then there's Malaysia who has M8. There's yeah. a lot of M8 players here. Yeah, um, Chonger. Chonger, yep. Uh, and like Taiwan, they have uh, J Team. Uh, a couple players from J Team here, I think three. So there's a lot of, you know, those those teams that have very tight groups of players that send all their players to the major. Yeah, send, send them. Uh, there's only two thus far hap that have happened with mm -hmm. the uh, Singapore and Thailand. So hopefully many more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, yesterday I was uh, I went down and was I walked right into the middle of a conversation where Kranich was telling Pimping how bad his shaman was. <laughs> <laughs> I told Pimping how bad his shaman was. <laughs> he, he defended it, but uh, Kranich was like, "No, what are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we're <laughs> getting into the next game. It's gonna be led up with the Rome. I'm actually somewhat surprised that Shy went with the Druid here because you figure if he went with the Rogue last game and it ran to its counter, then, you know, if the counter's out of the way, then the rest of the decks should be good matches for it. Yep, thus is Conquest. All right, Coin Innervate, Teacher. Uh, only can be answered by Sap. And like Prep Shadow Strike or something ridiculous. Yeah, Prep off the top or Sap would be pretty good here for Leta. Yeah. Oh, there's the Prep. I think he used it before the Bile Teacher goes off. We see in the hand there's a power of the wild, so that's not going to be five health anymore after this turn. At least Maybe most you can wait one turn. Can you though? I think you can. I don't know, because what is he going to do with Violet Teacher on two mana? If he does power of the wild, he's only making a two-two, and you can still kill it with with uh, Prep Shadow Strike and the dagger hit. And if you draw a, a Van Fleet next turn. You're really going to be hating yourself for using it. This but what if his hand is exactly Innervate, Living Roots, Living Roots Power? Then he just has it. <laughs> then, you just, then you just bow down and say, you are the Hearthstone God. Well, uh, let him know he's going to get an SI off the top, so no big deal. Well, if he knew that he was going to get an SI off the top, it would have been even more reason to hold it, because he would have gotten an extra two damage. Not true. True. Well, didn't want to face tank the five, or excuse me, the four the following turn, if there was a Power of the Wild. And Shy, in a bit of trouble, does go for the Moving Blade portal immediately. Going to go ahead and take out this Tomb Pillager with his Wrath and face. And not much to do here for Leta. He needs to pick up a Gadget in right quick. Yeah. They have Knives can cycle, but not really going to be doing much uh, against this deck. 
And he's gonna have to, yeah, he's gonna have to use it just to sort of draw in more. Double eviscerate now, he's yeah. got so much damage, but nothing, <laughs> nothing of substance. Yeah, it's just all frosting and no cake. Cake. <laughs> That's a good analogy. All right, moving portal off the top, hiding the, oh, the oh, wall drag oh. is pretty nice. Ooh. <laughs> Very spicy. That's so funny. <laughs> I've actually never seen a druid with a Kaldara Drake. Because it's you know, it's just unlikely that it happens. I got Kaldara Drake off of I think another spot historian, I think the other day. Okay. But yeah. if that's possible, maybe I'm making things up. <laughs> when you hear power multiple times with a druid. <laughs> just, it's just pretty keep good. Growling over and over again <laughs> until eventually you reach critical mass. <laughs> All right, if he doesn't draw a Dominion here, I think he should... Uh, he's a good portal. No, Raven Idol for a minion. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Let's see if he did. He didn't. And his, his options were Bite, Starfall, and Swipe there. I'm going to go ahead and bring... Oh, yeah! Valera to Northrend. Straight to Northrend goes Valera. Hit him right in the face. It's going to be a grindy game. Let it not draw into Gadgetan Auctioneer. Shy not drawn into his nourishes. They got to, you know, make do with what they have. And if Leta has to use a Deadly Poison and an Eviscerate here to clear off this, I guess he could just hit in with an hit in and an Eviscerate. Yeah. Forget I said way, anything going, about the Deadly Poison. <laughs> by the way, going back to Shy's decision to go for, for the uh, spell there, I think that he's fine with just removing everything that Leta puts out, but he doesn't want to have stuff for Leta to do, potentially. A lot of times, for instance, if you have a, a Gadget and Auctioneer go off, you just play nothing and they can't sap anything. So. Or backstab or Shadow Strike. Yeah, that's true. But there are some times where you just get Illidan. <laughs> and you go off. Sometimes you just Absolutely. get Deathwing. Oh, you can oh, kind of go oh off here. Goodness. This is going to be... Yeah, I mean, you go for it, a hundred percent. Right, your hand is is pittance right now. Yeah, three three saplings. Let's go. Take them really to Northwind. Three, six three. four. That's huge. <laughs> six four divine shield. Please, yeah. please fix. So he's gonna push seven damage this turn. So he's gonna put him to eighteen, and on the board, he's gonna have twelve plus five from hand the next turn. The 17. Oh, this is going to be big. I mean, Leta can clear some of this, but... And this isn't typically the strategy for Druid against Rogue, but it is for a lot of decks, right? You just kill them yeah. before they have the chance to do anything. Yeah. So he can backstab the Argent Commander, Commander eviscerate it, and then Deadly Poison to clear up one of the 3-3s three and clear up the second 3-3 three three the next turn. Uh, it's a lot of damage that you're taking, but I think it's damage that's necessary to try and get back into this game. And Shy is going to be getting very close to lethal, and Leta still has no substance in his hand. If, if a big threat comes out from Shy, which he does have two Ancient Abhorrors and two Moonglade portals in his well, deck. One more Moonglade portal in his deck. Wild Growth is not that Yeah, that, Yeah, that's what I meant. Like two. His two Arcane Giants. Deck. Two Arcane Giants as well, and he's casting a lot of spells so far. And Yug! And Yug! Van Cleef is a little bit late. I mean, do you just try and cash in on the Leroy now to get something <laughs> onto the board, even though he gets traded into I don't even know. This is so bad. Leroy, Cold Blood, Coin, Van Cleef, get the 8 8 Van Cleef, take out the Sapling, 10 damage to face. You really want the 8 8, you only want the 6 6 because that can potentially get taken care of with just Swipe and Wrath. You know your opponent has a couple of spells in hand. Yeah. And he's going for it. Here we go. Well, we'll see if it works in. out. And Shy is going to be expecting something like a conceal, but no such thing in Leda's hand. Just, this is it. Here we go. That's my hand. But Shy is now going to be two damage off lethal. So if he picks up... Pretty much any card in his deck that deals damage. Well, one damage actually with the hero power, so. One damage, yeah. So any, literally any card that deals damage. That's heal, <laughs> unfortunately. Reckless Rocketeer, one time. Actually, he wouldn't have lethal after. Oh, he would with the hero power. Reckless Rocketeer would be lethal. I am 
Master Jester comes out, no battle cry, unfortunately, but doesn't get to take out the Leroy. I, I, I think you set up the two turn lethal and don't kill the Leroy Jenkins. Oh, as right. weird as it sounds. Yeah, makes the, sense. The only thing that loses you the game in that situation would be like Earth the Ring Farseer, which Leta does run one of. But you still have to trade if you're Leta, though. But in that situation, yeah. Yeah, he'd still have to trade, and so you're just buying more time to, right. to draw into an additional In fact, he has spell. to trade into a uh, whelp <laughs> most of the time. So, yeah, good spot there by Shy saying, you know, I don't really need to kill out the Leroy, even though it's insane sounding because it's a 10 2. But, yeah, Shy is able to finish out the game here after this turn. Once Leta decides what he wants to do, he's going to tie up the series one game to one. Impressive play, I suppose, recognizing, you know, that he needed to go very aggressive early on and sort of go all in. Uh, usually a good strategy against Rogue because they do struggle to deal with all in sometimes. If they take damage, that damage is sticking. Right. Uh, Let it does run one Earth Ring Bars here, but Rogue doesn't run taunts. Uh, Quasi Mitchell Rogue doesn't run heals, so very hard for them to stabilize once they've reached uh, like a critical health. So uh, tied one to one now, and we have Rogue Druid and Rogue Hunter. Rogue Hunter for Shy and Rogue Druid for Leta. Yeah, lost is on both Rogues so far. And like you mentioned, Rogue is very good at dealing with stuff, but when they have to deal with every last thing, including whelps, mm -hmm. you're in a bit of trouble. <laughs> so. Yeah, even if you take like one damage a turn because you're daggering a 1-1, one -one, it's still a damage that you're not getting back. Or even doing something like, you know, he had a backstab and uh, eviscerate, for instance, the, the Argent commander. Yeah. And when you don't have to do that, when, you know, you can go ahead and just take your time and say, you know, I'll leave that one minion. I'll kill these two efficiently, get some Gadgetson nonsense going on, and then maybe build up, you know, Van Cleef or yeah. what have you. And then you're okay. I just left that one minion. It's okay. But when you get your, you get the rogue down far enough, you can't leave it alone. Yeah, but a little bit of a rough draw for Leta there. No Azure Drakes, no Gadget and Auctioneers. Yeah. None of the cycle except for Fan. And he fanned on an empty board, so that's not what you want to have happen. So um, it's hard to tell how the uh, the decks actually match up. Right. That um, because Druid and Hunter is actually a pretty close matchup. I do like the Hunter most of the time, but uh, because... Druids don't deal with high mains very well at all, mm -hmm. and they also don't deal with a lot of early pressure well, unless they have like perfect starts. But uh, Hunter versus Rogue, and this is so this sort of is going to take us back a little bit because recently with Questing Adventure, I feel like Hunter is better, but this is sort of an old school Hunter that Shy has where it has two deadly shots and Stranglethorn Tiger. Right. The, the thing with the Hunter is that the faster it is, the better against Rogue. Yeah. Because you get that damage in before Rogue can respond. Mm -hmm. The more mid-range, the more late game you play, things like high main, they just get sapped, gives Rogue time. And looking at Shai's list, one Unleash, one Stranglethorn Tiger. Stranglethorn Tiger does pretty good against Rogue. They can't deal with that. That's going face. It's guaranteed five damage. Exactly. And two Abusive Sergeants, but no Argent Squires. Two fiery bats, and like you mentioned, two deadly shots. So somewhat fast. Needs to get a fast start here to kill off Leta. This is a very risky keep from Leta. He kept three minions. Yeah. Which I very, very rarely <laughs> recommend as a rogue player because uh, three minions is – you want to be proactive against Hunter. I cast a game yesterday where a rogue took ten damage – from a huge toad because he had no way to deal with it. No way to deal with it. I mean, <laughs> I understand in Lettuce case he has coin and he has coin SI, which are probably two of the main ones, but I mean, he might just not be doing anything for a long yeah. time without spells. I mean, he's picked up Deadly Poison, he's picked up Eviscerate, so those are going to be pretty good for him. And yeah, it's, uh, it's probably going to pay off in the long run for Letta because of the fact that he's been picking up spells he's for his next couple turns, and the fact that Shy missed his one and two drop, but not too sure. Yeah, Shy did have the opportunity to play the Fire Bat last turn on turn two, but elected not to because once he picks up the Han Master in the future, it's very nice to be able to get that out and get the guaranteed buff onto it. But uh, all that aside, 
finally seeing Leta's plan come into action here. Going to have a 6 6 Van Cleef, but Shy says, you know what? This is why I have Deadly Shot in the deck. I mean. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> I might even like to see SI7 agent there, because literally anything anything that would kill the SI7 agent would also kill the Van Cleef. And right. you take the four damage anyway most of the time. I guess he realized that uh, he wouldn't have enough enough early spells to make the Van Cleef bigger later. Right. But then that becomes a problem with his mulligan. Yeah, true. He sh shouldn't have kept so many minions if his plan early on was to make a big Van Cleef. So. Also, you're playing against a deck that has two deadly shots. Even if you know that Shy is not going to be keeping in his opening yeah. hand, there's a reasonable chance he just gets one. Yeah. All right, so going to be backstep SI. Looks like he's using his Deadly Poison Dagger into the Fiery Bat here, which is somewhat painful, but things have to be done. And he wanted to go on the SI7 agent, by the way. Uh, two is three for Hunter, a bit of a Moz math for you. Unless he's running Arcane Shot. <laughs> we actually had a player running Yogg and Load. I went down, and there's a player okay. up here, apparently who just runs Yogg. He's a Yogg and Load connoisseur. He uh, plays on ladder, gets high legend, <laughs> and he actually played in this tournament. Got to the, I think he got to the uh, quarterfinals, or pretty far into the lower bracket here. I don't know if I trust anybody who calls himself a Yogg and Load connoisseur. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I called him that. But <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Glad he didn't call himself that. <laughs> All right, by the way, Leta not committing to killing off the wolf here, but can do so next turn. Yeah. And things are kind of coming to a head here because Leta has the ability to go up with Gadgetson pretty soon, but on the other side of the board here is the Call of the Wild. And let's see if Leta wants to get this Tomb Pillager out as quickly as possible or if he just goes for trying to maintain the yeah. board state with the I SI. Ooh, anyway. I was not expecting this. If he doesn't draw exactly prep, he gets one card from Gadgetan Auctioneer, and it's likely to be killed. It's a little bit risky, especially, I don't know. I suppose he wants to force a reaction out of Shy, and then from there, he has minions to play, and he also has ridiculous amounts of damage in hand. Obviously, he didn't have the second Cold Blood, but he already had eight from the Eviscerate Cold Blood, plus just SI and uh, the Tomb Pillager are doing a lot of damage. I feel like he had a decent enough early game to feel like he can just play Tomb Pillager and say go and save, right. and save it for the coin. Yeah, just go nuts with Gadgetson. Yeah. Hero power is very strong against Rogue. <laughs> just pressing that button over and over again. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, a very smart Hunter player. And I, I, it was at, it was at uh, EU uh, Spring Championships. Told me that sometimes it's just better to, even if you have high man on six, just hunter power. Your hero just power. Hero, hunter hero power. Because yeah. if, it, if it's going to get sapped, if you have like a weaker play, he was in a situation where he had high man on six and like an animal companion. Yeah. And so he just played animal companion and got like a Misha and then hero powered. Right. I, I can see making that play, making sure to get the hero power yeah. in every single time. If you have literally nothing else, though, you kind of have to play the high man. Yeah. But this is going to be a rough position for Leta now. He's got a piece to find a way to win the game, which he has enough damage to do so. But also deal with a call of the wild, which is right. like he knows it's in his hand. By the way, I was, yeah. yeah, I was going to mention that when you see your opponent play abusive sergeant onto a board that's screaming for phantom knives, yeah. just to make sure to get something out for a call of the wild, you know it's coming. Yeah, uh, five. How much damage? That's is this? lethal. Is it? Yeah, five, seven, eight, nine. Oh no, it's one off. One off lethal. Feels bad, man. Uh, he does have the hunter hero power though, so he can just start trading in here. Can he possibly die if he leaves everything alive? I don't think. It's Sap, double cold blood, double eviscerate would be the dream. He, so that'd be 16 plus 8. That'd be 24. But he'd literally have to have exactly those five cards. Wait, 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 wait. It's not because you don't have enough mana. Oh, <laughs> one mana off lethal. Yeah. Oh, no. If he shadow strikes the wow. Misha and then eviscerates, eviscerates, and cold bloods. If that was Sap, he had lethal. That's insane. That's 12, 8. That's 20 damage. So, almost has it, but, and he's, you're going to see him, like, he's just put a smile show. on his face, <laughs> and like, ah. Uh, I was at you, Shy. I'm going to show you how close I was. I'm going to empty my hand and show you how much damage this is. So. If there was a way to kill off his Tomb Pillager somehow, while getting the damage in the face, 
If only. Yeah. All right. So he has 12 plus 9 right now, which is 21. He's going to go over every single possible scenario in his head and say, maybe I'm doing the math wrong. Yeah. Because uh, this is a grand finals. Wait, what if he had cold blood and then eviscerate? But then he but then he has so much fewer damage because he's using eviscerate on the Misha. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how close Shy realizes he wants to die in there. Yeah. But Shy now one game away from becoming the Hearthstone Thailand major champion. And he's got a lot of leeway as well. If he loses this game, he has one more game to lose in this match, and then he's got three more games to lose in the second match. But he's got Questing Adventure Rogue against Alita's Rogue or Druid. And I, I like Questing Adventure Rogue in the mirror match because you can go all in faster, but it's more vulnerable to sap. And Druid, it's just kind of... Up in the air, depending it's kind on what of up you in can, the air. Yeah, what yeah. you get as far as your draws are concerned. If I'm Leta here, I think I lead off with the Druid. If he likes a better matchup. I think your, your yeah. Rogue is just strictly not favored just based on the cards in your deck yeah and so just you know earlier we we're talking about you know maybe you want to you know get your worst deck out there first because you know you might fall to a lower bracket and you want to keep your stamina right now i think i just want to have any sort of mental edge that i can you know if you make sure. your opponent lose once maybe he starts getting starts sweating yeah. he's a little bit nervous so anything you can to get that grand prize i think i lead off with the best deck here i would just not even spend any brain power thinking about it and just pick one at random. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my Thai bot here? Alright, yeah. found one. <laughs> the, yeah, the, flip it. Flip the coin. Yeah, the, the conquest pick order. I don't know. There's Yeah, you can get like a little bit of a mental edge, but saving the mental stamina that you have to just not think about it and click a deck at random well, I think it might like give you an edge in the long run because that's like <laughs> seconds of <laughs> of of time in each match that you're saving, which I by the end of a day can really add up. And at the end, it doesn't even matter. Well, Leta has decided to go with the rogue. One goes with the worst match or worst matchup in my opinion, as opposed to the druid. Valera versus Valera, and he has an uphill climb. But that said. You know, it's just two cards. So we found, we see the differences already. So this is an interesting matchup. Uh, I don't think a lot of people have too much experience with this because typically it's kind of just Miracle Rogue experts going at it. And what typically happens is that one player has a ridiculous hand with gadgets in and just kind of a bunch of stuff to fuel that. The other player has to make the decision along the way that my opponent just has a better hand, I have to go all in. Yep. And typically, we actually see the player who makes the all-in call actually win because it's some crazy like Leroy plus, you know, uh, the conceal or something, you know, just uh, any other minion there with the conceal to be able to get that damage. And so, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Neither player has the opportunity to go all in right now. In fact, they both have pretty reasonable gadgets in hands. Yeah, but Leta has the Tomb Pillager, which is so important in this matchup. Yeah. It's a minion that has to be answered, but that's also sort of a utility minion, which is, you know, not uh, very common in Rogue. You know, you, you either have a utility minion that doesn't provide much of a threat, or you have a just a minion that's just a big threat. Most of Rogue's minions are just big threats. So... We do have the perfect answer to Tomb Pillager, though, and that is the Sap, because rogues really like their coins. <laughs> they, I think Letter would rather have this Tomb Pillager die than have it get sapped. Yeah. And so we could see, well, okay, so here we see Shy with the Shadow Strike. He can go prep Shadow Strike, or he can go prep Sap, and I would rather go for the prep Sap to deny the coin here. Giving Letter the coin means he can go coin Drake. So yeah, I think it's going to be questing prep sap. Just get the 4-4 four four on the table. Provide a threat for your opponent to deal with without the coin in his arsenal. I kind of just like Shadow Strike. Just Shadow Strike? Just Shadow Strike. You're giving your opponent something to do. Give me a quest. Yeah, but I don't know. It seems like 4 health on a questing adventure is not a big enough of a threshold to use that many resources. Because that's a prep and a questing adventure. He's got Azure Drake to sort of reload. Right, but you're denying your opponent a coin. It's kind of like using a Wrath on 
an Acolyte. Yeah. Because otherwise it gets out of control. You're trading one for two. You're giving your opponent advantage in that way, but you're just preventing them from going off, essentially. Well, Leta has multiple ways to deal with this questing adventure, whether he wants to go for Blood Mage Backstab, Blood Mage Viscerate, and yeah, doesn't want to take the extra four damage because not much healing in the deck. Pretty straightforward turn here for Shy. Gonna go ahead, play out that Drake. Needs to kill off the Thanos on the other side, and just having what's well, trading back and forth. Letta, pretty straightforward as well. Going to be looks like the Drake into the backstab. Take it out with the dagger. I think the player really getting much of an edge, but Letta's hand is just feels so much better. Right, but it's a lot of minions, and I don't know if you'll ever have the chance to play all those minions, especially if Shy forces his hand like this. Yeah, but now both questing adventures <laughs> gone. This guy's toes. Uh, so let it though, yeah, you're right. He's gonna have to deal with this, but Tomb Pillager plus Eviscerate. I mean, Shy established himself as the aggressor very early on. And I feel like Thank you. you don't know in the match whether or not you should be the aggressor or not until much later. And he sort of just like gave up his hand and gave Letta an easy game plan of I'm just gonna remove your stuff because I have card advantage. Right. It's it's difficult though because his hand was just questing adventure plus stuff, and his only other his only, only other real you know, alternative was just do nothing essentially. Well, I mean that's fine in road matchup. I think is if you have removal spells, which I mean he did have shadow strike, he had sap, you can wait. And he he had gathers an auctioneer, he had Azure Drake, so it wasn't like he didn't have a way to reload. And uh, now he's stuck in a situation where he basically has to draw a conceal or he's not going to win. Leta actually has a pretty interesting choice here. He can go for gadgets in and conceal. It does die to double fan, but barring that, it should be okay. Shai's already used one fan knives to cycle early on in the game. Did he really? He did, yeah. Use it on turn three just to get the next the extra card. Hmm. Well, with Leroy, yeah. that might change things. Yeah, because if he can push 12 this turn and find some damage. Yeah. Went down to 12 right now, which means that Leroy plus Eviscerate. Meanwhile, on the side of Leta, he has a lot of damage in his own right with the Leroy and the Cold Blood. I think that Leta might actually go for something like a sap on the gadget because he's pretty close to just killing Shy as well. He needs to start putting something together though. He's actually like out of removal spells, sort of. Hmm. I mean, he's got Shadow Strike left in the deck, but... Well, I think regardless, he starts off with the coin. I don't know what, what world you wouldn't start off with the coin. You're not going to be playing Battle Teacher this turn, I don't think. So, huh. Picks up the prep, which you might have yeah. wanted to use that with Sap. Yeah, that's... Usually why coins the Wait, better one to start off. Yeah, I don't know why he's prepping right now, because he has nothing to prep with. I guess shift reasonable. He's gonna shift face it. He's looking for lethal, I guess. I mean he's not gonna find lethal, but I think he's just looking for seal. He's running out of time though, so he's really gotta go. And he's gonna have to trade in the Gazan Auctioneer. I don't what he could have just gotten another another card and had a twelve twelve Van Cleef though. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a reason why he did that. I guess the coin might help him get lethal later, but he doesn't know that right now. Yeah. That said, Shy is in a pretty interesting spot right now. Has Barnes to sap, though. I don't think there's really anything great Barnes can pull. He's out of questing adventures. That's not bad. Yeah, two builders, not bad at all. And going to build his own 6 6 Van Cleef, which means. Yeah, we're just going right back over to Leta being in trouble. Yeah, he's got no spells up. What what's even removal spells does he have left in the deck? That's kind of a removal spell. Sort of, but he doesn't have eviscerates. And if he phantom knives first, Shadow Strike all of a sudden gets eliminated as a removal option. Same as backstab. He's already he only has one backstab left in the deck. Only one backstab left. I mean his deck is like all minions. Does he Leroy and Clear with Fan? He, Leroy hit the Van Cleef and then Fan? I think, yeah, that sounds like a good play because he has to play the grinding game now. He's got resource advantage. 
but it kind of, yeah, he does have a lot of damage as well. It's, it's really tempting to just hold on to the Leroy for burst, but he is at 15, and he just he's already seen two Cloblood, so he's somewhat safe. Hmm. He needs to go violently, violently in one way or the other, though, right? He needs to either be very safe or very aggressive, I would say. Gadgetan's bold, especially since the rope's about to start. Wow. So he's going to cold blood, and then he has SI7 agent, but he's going to take... He's just going to play the Van Cleef, and Bonin has well, three damage now, along with a Leroy. That's 9, 10. If there's an Eviscerate, that's lethal. If he draws Eviscerate, that is. That SI7 is agent's not quite. The but thing is, Shy's at 23 health. He can just take his time as well. Yeah, and he, he still has a clear here with Shadow Strike and draws Conceal. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he's used Cold Blood. He had to use a Cold Blood to clear. There's actually no way that Le Leta can find Lethal with the cards that he has. She's going to go face, Conceal. Shy he's got won? Lethal set up next turn. I don't think Leta can, can get there. There's no taunt, no heal for Leta. He needs to win the game right now, but like you said... So he's got 14 with Leroy, and then Dagger Deadly would be the most possible damage that he can do, and that'd be 17. Looking like it, and he has limited draw as well. So many options. I think we might have a champion here, unless... Letta picks up a miracle draw from this. Let's get an ancient war tucked in. <laughs> Backstab always comes deck. off of Fan of Knives. And that is going to be likely the end here for Letta. Second fan. Just Second for fan measure. for four mana. What's a miracle four mana draw? There's a prep. It's not going to do it. Not going to do it. He's going to try and set up as much damage as possible. But Chai has got to realize. You can see him. He's breathing a little bit heavier. His chest <laughs> yes, is pumping. He's shifting. He's like, this is it. This is it. I can't lose my board here. I have the damage in hand. Chai is going to win the Thailand Major. Really impressive performance by Chai. Fist bump. And that's it. We have ourselves a champion. Shy coming from the winner's bracket all the way through. Zero match losses <laughs> in this Eight tournament. No, right? Eight and no, no big deal. Eight no, doing Easy. it without a warrior deck as well. Both these players make it to the final. By the way, I love Shy, Shy all business the entire time. Okay, but when he finally wins, let's the let's have the award you ceremony. can see how happy okay. he is. Let's doesn't even know how to show his emotions How you thinking right about now. the tournament? Now, yeah. you feel shaking but now. We're going to have a ceremony Feels here good, with the Feels MC good, on stage. We're going to be interviewing Shai uh, here. Do you have winner. any message to our audience? Um, the crowd is so insane. And uh, very I good think and very his native language is Chinese. So mm -hmm. We're going to be having a Thai world with the but, uh, okay, yeah, now we move to the uh, uh, prize award ceremony. Okay, now may I invite the third runner-up uh, and, really up and uh, second runner-up, Mr. Uh, Wolvin and Shunga. Let's go forward to the Asia Pacific Championship. And validating his win there. He's validating his win there. And now we're going to bring out all of the top four placers as well as... Uh, some of the people that uh, helped organize the event. Him coming in fourth was, I believe, Warwind. And next to him is Chonger. Both of those players received $500 for their efforts here. Followed by Leda. So just short in the finals there, in the grand finals. He's going to come home with 1000 And finally, our winner, Shy. 200 or excuse me, $2,500. His name, yeah. He's the CEO of i 3 the Thai partner uh, for Blizzard and uh, the, who produced this uh, event. Going to give some players some Razor gear as well to go along with their prize money. H. Warwin, their sports place from Australia. Australia really didn't perform well at the Singapore Major. Didn't really have anybody in like the top, not even in the top like 64. Right, well, unless I'm some of their better players didn't uh, make the trip here. Navi, I believe, is already at the last call. Yep, already at last call. 
Uh, there was actually only – there was no way that he could have lost on last call because he was seven. There's Chonger. Oh, $600. Okay, extra 100 <laughs> to Give him a $100 boost. <laughs> By the way, feel bad for Chonger. You got the uh, top four again. Again? So close to getting the championship. Yeah, he got uh, fourth at the Singapore Major. So both times he made it far, that's really impressive. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always <laughs> the third bridesmaid, <laughs> never even the second bridesmaid, <laughs> never even the maid of honor. <laughs> yeah, never the maid of honor. <laughs> All right, here we go, Lettuce. So close, but he uh, did his country proud. Yeah, he's starting to get more and more razor gear as we get <laughs> as we get up there. They're just they're just gonna Can hand it. Yeah, they're just gonna give uh, Shy a wheelbarrow <laughs> full of razor stuff. I didn't know razor made cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a razor branded wheelbarrow. Oh no! <laughs> so there is actually, yeah. They okay. need to get ready to. <laughs> He's <put> like, wait. <laughs> He's like, wait, man. Yeah, they uh, have confetti, the confetti to prepare. Confetti wasn't ready. <laughs> uh, well played by Shy. Fortunately, mistimed the key raise, but yeah. <laughs> he does get the key to the twenty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, that key's actually real. Uh, there's a safe that's actually backstage where the where the twenty five dollar twenty five hundred dollars is in, and so it's not a trophy. That's the literal key to the safe where the prize money is being held. <laughs> don't want to break that. Yeah, you don't get your money. Yeah. But really impressive performance. Yeah, and, well, uh, there's up. us. Yeah, there's us. They're finishing up the festivities on stage here. But uh, as for us. You know, we've done a lot of casting this weekend, a lot of great matches mm -hmm. so far. Or uh, the, uh, that happened, sorry. Past yeah. tense. Yeah, so uh, we can take a look at the top eight for the tournament to, you know, see where some of the players lined up. Uh, we went in today with not very many matches remaining, not very many players remaining. And you can see Shad, Little Chunk of BH Warwind, we saw on stream. But Go Gong Sing, Jackpot, He's Not Axel, and Kin all making that top eight. So. Uh, you know, a pretty, a really impressive top eight. He is on Axel participating in championships. Go Gong Sing, he's been around for a while. Jackpot showed some fun matches on stream as well as Kin. And then, of course, our top four. So, uh, really great. And, man, these. Thailand loves their Yogg-Saron. <laughs> <laughs> this is the city of, of Yogg-Saron, Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah. We do have to mention, though, that there was, you know, there's prize money up to eight spots. There's also Hearthstone Championship Tour points. However, none of the players in the top eight actually made the uh, the last call. So we had, we had two players who were capable of doing that. So no changes to the last call for those of you keeping track at home. But yeah, it's been a fun weekend of games. Another major is in the books. D2, do you have any final words that you'd like to to share with the audience at home before I close it out? Uh, it's been great casting with you, great casting with all of the casters here. Mm -hmm. Really cool to see all of the decks and all of the innovative play and just great energy overall here in Thailand. Uh, thanks for Blizzard for being awesome and holding events like these, as well as the great folks here with, uh, with the, you know working in Thailand. Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, big shout out to all the sponsors and partners for the event, as well as I and I three uh, for being gracious hosts, as well as producers for the event, as well as the Pantip Esports Arena for holding uh, the tournament. Uh, but that's gonna do it. Thanks to everyone who tuned in across the weekend, who watched any minute of the matches here at the Thailand Hearthstone Majors. For myself and from all the other casters, as well as everybody involved in the production crew, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you for the next major.